All right, today we're going to be looking at engineering notebooks and sketches. This is my engineering notebook. On your engineering notebook, somewhere either in this area or maybe up here, there will be a spot for your name, class uh, number, and things like that. If you look on the inside, you're going to have a table of contents. Okay, Table of contents has page number, the title of whatever's on that page, and then the date. Really important for going back and finding your own work. Okay. Um, you also notice if we look here, we're going to go a little forward. All right, this is an engineering notebook page. You'll notice up at the top, there's a title. If you look down here, it says design by, witness by, and then the date. Okay, depending on what you're doing will determine how you orient your page. A lot of times you'll have your page this way if you're sketching out something or making a list of some stuff, or maybe you're in a coding class and you're trying to make some pseudocode, you'd pseudocode in this direction, <clears throat> top-down structure and all of that. Uh, but a lot of times in this, especially in design and modeling, or any design class, you'll flip the page to the side. This gives you a landscape view, it gives you a little bit more room to work with. You'll also notice that whenever I flipped it, I kept the seam up at the top, and this is the bottom of my picture. And the reason is, is if you draw the other way, you'd be fighting the seam all the time. You're fighting this piece of paper. It's going to get in your way. It's going to cause you trouble. So we always, I like to keep it oriented this way if we're drawing. Um, makes design a little bit easier. You can always write your title up in this little spot up here. It'll still work just fine. And you can see some examples of different work. You can see how this is the bottom. You can see that all the pictures are oriented on the page evenly, uh, lines are nice and crisp, a ruler was used, always use a ruler whenever you're doing straight lines. We can take a look at some of our other drawings that we'll do. Okay. Now, as far as the rules for our engineering notebook, in the real world, pin, always pin, no matter what. If you're drawing in an engineering notebook, you all have to use pen, and that's for legal reasons. And we'll get into those legal reasons in just a bit. But let's look at some other rules. So if we were to be done with a page, and let's say there's some blank space. You can see there's some examples right here where what's happened is there's blank space at the bottom of the page, and they've actually X'd it out. They've crossed it out. Now, the reason that engineering notebooks are usually done in pen, although in this class we're going to use a pencil because we're learning how to draw and uh, we want to be able to correct our mistakes. Um, but if you look here, you see there's X's, but also down at the bottom it says designed by, witnessed by, and then the date. This is very important. Anytime you're designing something, let's say you came up with this idea here and you decided late that you're going to patent it and somebody else patented it at the exact same time what you can do is when you go to court you would come in and say hey these are my drawings you can see that I've crossed this section out so nobody could have modified the drawing down here and made it different but also you can see that it was signed by me on this date as well as another person witnessed it okay that makes you the designer but also it makes this person liable it means they can go to court and they can be asked hey did you sign this you can also see that if any changes were made like this was taped into the sheet the person who signed it who designed it also did initials here and here's a change they made here they made a change to make it make more sense so when they make a change they sign it but also down here where all these X's are. They've signed this. So they're saying, hey, this is mine. This is what I did. This is my work. And it was done on this date. Okay. As of recently, many engineering firms are going back to paper engineering notebooks <clears throat> because they're high fidelity. And what that means is if you draw something in an engineering notebook, it's a physical medium. It is here. If you designed it on a computer or something else, it can be digitally tampered with. You can't tamper with paper. It's very difficult. Uh, the signing dates and all of that can't be changed easily. Uh, this holds up a lot better in the court of law. If you were trying to prove your patent, this is what you would do. Now, 
in this book, in my engineering notebook, a lot of what you see are drawings. They're two scale. They use the graph paper correctly. Uh, a ruler was used to keep very straight edges. Things line up properly. Okay. If you look at a lot of these, you can tell like spacing is very specific on these. Uh, ruler edges and sides of the drawing match up. Okay. Lots of these drawings are drawings. They're not sketches. So let's look at a sketch. Here's a sketch that. I have done. Okay, it's for an orthotic for a foot. Um, and if you look, there's some things that I really want to see commonly when we're sketching. First off, multiple sketches. Very rarely will there be one sketch on a page unless it's a very important sketch. Okay. Secondly, there are lots of callouts. Lots of things are being defined in here. You can see that there are straps. It says what the like this is a strap. It says where it's going, what it's made out of. There are callouts for all kinds of different material. Here's a picture of a knee, not the world's best picture of a knee, but a knee. You can see that it shows how the strap attaches to the knee. You can see here there's lots of documentation, lots of words, lots of phrases. It's not just a picture. Uh, if you look here, you can see kind of like a full picture of it. It's a little hard to see because it's a little light. But you can see with it, it on a foot. Lots of information, very detailed pictures, things called out. These are stuff that we're looking for. Okay. Now, if we look in our past, we can actually see multiple uses of engineering notebooks and technical drawings used in the past. So. If we take a look here, this is an image drawn by Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, I can't even I can't read it, so I can't even tell which side's up or down. But you can see lots of drawings, even though we can't understand the handwriting because we can't read what's going on here. We can see some common themes. Okay, lots of wording, lots of information, lots of drawings. Callouts. You can even see here, he's labeled this. We don't know what he's labeled, what it is even, but it's labeled. You can see that the drawings, they're not perfect, but the time was taken. Care was taken. Um, another one of his examples is this water wheel here. There we go. And if you look at this water wheel, you can actually see this one we can at least tell which side's up because gravity's pulling down this pendulum here. But you can see there's lots going on on this page. Now, I wouldn't expect any of us to be Leonardo da Vinci's in our drawing abilities, but we can look at his format, how he's filled up his page. He's filled up the central portion of his page with a large image. It's very detailed. It's his most detailed image. And then if we look on the sides, he's got little detail-oriented portions. Like this is a, an expansion. You can see an expansion of one of these wheels and you can see how it's got a gear here and how it connects and you can see this little you know there's an aperture here and a, and a screw wheel you can see pendulums you know weighted things lots of different call outs um, and this is you know obviously an example of really really good work but we can look at other work okay here's one uh, from a famous mathematician. You can actually see mathematicians use it too. You've got many pictures. They're trying to describe what's going on here. They're giving lots of different angles. They're giving all of their mathematical work. Uh, it's dated up here. Okay. All their stuff that they've got is, you know, labeled as far as like weights and all of that information is there. Uh, Let's take a look at this one. This is one from an actual engineering notebook. And it's just a quick sketch, but everything's labeled. They've got wheels labeled. You can see that they've got a signature right there. This one right here. And then as well as this picture or this uh, signature right here, both are dated. Project name up at the top. Okay. The date is there. Page number, book number all kinds of information that can be used to find this information later. Okay. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell, American inventor, telephone. If we look here. This is one of his actual drawings for one of his patents. 
And you can see here, this is his engineering. It's a notebook. If you look over here, you can actually see there's multiple pages. Okay. This is dated March 10th, 1876. Okay. You can see that all of this is labeled. He's got lots of information on here. You can see that there's a receiver here, and this goes into like a, what well, at the time would be a kind of speaker, a megaphone, and the sound would come out here. You can see there's lots of information, a lot more writing in this one, and that's okay. Sometimes pages are more drawing, sometimes pages are more writing. Uh, Thomas Edison. So I guess this should look fairly familiar. It's a light bulb, okay? March 18th, 1886, okay? You can see he's labeled all of this out. There's a lot of uh, early electrical drawing in here before this, there were standards for how to draw electricity. But you can see he's got voltage right here. So he's got a battery source. He's actually drawn it there. He says it's 300 volts. He's got the bulb drawn. Uh, lots of information here we, can, we can't even read. I can see the phrase 200 volts though. Okay, he signed it. Okay, really interesting. Actually, that's not his signature. That's the person that was the witness. T A E, Thomas Alva Edison. He initialed it. Okay, but we can have drawings of just about anything. This is one drawn by a Mythbuster. If you like Adam Savage, we got a few of his drawings here. He made something called a Strom Beast. It's a uh, it's a machine that walks on multiple legs, and he's designed one that could be ridden by a person and pedaled forward. So it's pedaling and then driving feet forward. And you actually see he's done some calculations in here to figure out the angles for the legs of the Strom Beast. Okay, that's a really cool one. Another Adam Savage drawing because he's probably my favorite person for sketching. This is actually a picture of a bear costume he made because you can use sketches and technical drawings in all kinds of field costume design is one of them okay uh, you can see you can't it's a little off the page but he did sign it it's over here in this corner uh, you can see he's wrote out some notes to himself he's really this page what it's really talking about is he's trying to figure out how he'll fit inside this physical space okay he's showing how the shoulders will be mounted so he can actually seem bigger than he really is. Uh, he's talked about too much weight and how it's going to fit. He's drawn out the claws. He's really, you know, there's a lot going on here. Now, obviously, none of us are going to be this good of an artist right off the bat, but you can see a lot going on, a lot of information on there. Uh, another famous scientist. This is probably one of my favorite drawings. This is a Saturn V rocket. Okay. Now, this drawing is uh, done by Von Braun. He's a German physicist who came here and worked for NASA. Um, did a lot for the Apollo missions and uh, was with NASA for years. But you can see a picture of the Saturn V rocket. And this is the actual drawing he did while he was designing the rocket and how it would work. And you can see he's got measurements here. So you can see that from here to here, it's 33 feet. But from here to here, it's 10 feet. He labels what this material is going to be. He talks about older projects uh, and future projects. Apollo or Gemini docking cone. So they're talking about how there's a connection here. A docking connection that was used for a previous mission. If you look over here in the corner, this is one of my favorite parts. He actually drew a six foot tall man that you can see. You can see that he initialed it. He dated it November 29th, uh, 1964. Okay, he's talking about all this information. You can see he's calculating the weight up here. He's got all kinds of different information. He talks about supplies, co cooking supplies, equipment, food storage, radiation, storm shelter, everything that you could possibly think of. He's trying to get it all in this one page. This is his main page where he's calling out like his main idea and then he's going to go back later on. You can even see up here another part of the design that he didn't even finish drawing because his page ran out. This is the service module. This is the part that would come landing back down to earth and you can even see he drew a little rocket right 
booster engine right here, which would help them, you know, lift off from the moon and head back to Earth. So we don't have to just constrain ourselves to fancy drawings done by famous scientists. Let's look at something from, let's use one of my examples. So let's say we're having a problem getting up in the morning. And we needed to design a way to wake up quickly. All right, so this is the Wake-O-Matic. Okay, you can see that there's, I've got information over here. When the alarm goes off, it will cut the string, slapping the sleeping person in the face. Obviously, you're going to be a great way to wake up. All right, this, now, I've even noted a negative on here, though. String would have to be reset during each use. Okay, and you can see what's going on here. I've drawn a bed. I've labeled the bed. I've labeled where the face is because my drawings aren't that great. An alarm clock. Okay, and then this alarm clock is connected to a pair of scissors. And when the alarm goes off, it's going to cut this string. And then right here is an arm on a pivot point. I've even thought of the pivot point. So it's going to fall down, slap the person in the face. Okay, I've drawn another image over here. All right, and it says molded from a real hand made from silicone. So they would put a hand in a mold, pull it out, fill it full of silicone, and then that would be the slapping hand. Okay, this is great, but when you're designing anything, there's different iterations. So came back and made the Waco Matic 2.0. Okay, the Waco Matic 2.0, a little bit more information, a few more drawings. Got a little bit better as we're going along. Okay, so similar concept, you know, your face is here, you're on your bed, you know, the pivot arm and the hand. But now, instead of cutting the string, the string goes up to a pulley and then down here to a motor connected to a digital alarm clock. Why go old school, right? When the alarm clock goes off, it's going to release the motor. The string is going to fall down. It's going to slap the user in the face. Okay, so right here it says it. When the alarm goes off, string will be released. This will cause the hand to swing down, slapping the person who is asleep. Once the user is slapped, the alarm will rewind the string, setting it for the next use. So it's reusable. You can see I've drawn like the ball bearing here, and then I've kind of said, hey, there's arms longer than I have room for, so I've kind of drawn this squiggly line and then drawn the slapping hand. Uh, I've drawn my the motor and the spool and the string that's going to pull it. Lots more information here. Okay. Now let's look at some student drawings. Okay. Uh, in the past, we've had, uh, you know, it's always good to give good and bad examples of work. So, um, let's take a look at this one. This is an example of what not to do. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on here. Not much information. Uh, the, it's very wanton. Things are just wherever the person saw fit. Uh, their notes aren't very good. The arrows don't really point to anywhere. The images, like, what's going on here? I don't know. I can't figure it out. Uh, you know, they've mentioned a rubber band, some popsicle sticks, but there's really no information. I can't figure out much from this. Okay. Here's a slightly uh, different one, probably in the same genre. This one, there's, there's not much information here. Okay, they've at least labeled what it is, but I, I can't tell what it is. Their drawing isn't that good. So without any information, without any sentences on here, it's going to be really hard for me to tell what's going on. If you're weak at drawing, use your strength as words. Fill in information, write it out. If you're an amazing drawer, you might be able to get away with less words, but if you're struggling with the drawing portion, describing what's going on is always more useful. All right, here's a slightly better one. It's in landscape view. You can see they've given me two images, which is nice, and they're two full-size images, but there's still no wording, there's no sentences, there's nothing really describing it. This one makes kind of sense of what's going on, but it gets really messy up in this corner, really difficult to understand. And you got to remember, this is all student work. All right, here's another piece of student work. This is much better. You can see they've given me inches. They've told me what's going on. They've given me materials, a list of materials. Uh, they've given me multiple pictures from different angles. This is a lot more clear and concise. I can tell what's going on here. Okay. So let's move on from the, the prosthetic dog leg. Let's look at something else. Here's a piece of student work where they were designing a coffee mug. This is one of my favorite ones I've seen so far. You know, 
really clear what's going on. They took their time on their drawing. They explained what's going on, okay? So you can see here that it's a helmeted figure with like horns coming out, and then they've got an arrow that's stuck into the back of their helmet. And what's interesting is they've explained what's going on with this arrow. So they've said it's a straw, okay? And they said, took an arrow to the helmet, and they didn't put a little exclamation point, which is fine. It's always fun to have a little bit of fun stuff in there. Um, lots of more information. They've even explained how the straw comes down all the way to the bottom of the cup. They really thought about it. They gave measurements. Uh, are they perfect measurements? No, but they're good. They're at least clear, concise, um, very good student work. Uh, I might like a few, a little bit more sentencing in here, but in reality, this is this is an example of really good work. Let's look at one more picture. I know there's been a lot of them, but let's take a look at what uh, something that you might have seen in real life. If you watch MythBusters, they did one on getting stuck in a vortex in the water and if it could drown you and uh, this is another Adam Savage drawing where he's trying to figure out how they're going to test this myth and if you look here he's drawn all this out it's on two different pages of an engineering notebook okay so first thing he drew was the full tank and you can see he's labeled out everything he's given you know he said this is scaffolding that it's going to be 16 feet tall from here to here to this top section. Um, you can see that he's labeled the person. They're the B layer. Okay, it's kind of a counterweight. He said that there's a swivel bar here, and you can see that there's the swivel bar, uh, that there's a pump down here, uh, that they're using railroad ties to hold it up, because he's got you got to think about your materials. You can see he's drawn the scaffolding really well. Like I said, we're never, we're not going to reach his standard, but it's great to look at what would be good. Uh, once he's you know, developed what the larger view is, he's come over here. And if you look, this is really interesting. He's drawn his vortex. He's drawn his tank. So you can see here's the tank. Here's where, you know, obviously the water line is going to be here because this is where the vortex starts. He's even drawn an arrow, even though we do we really need an arrow? No, but it's, it's showing motion. It's helping us see what's going on. He's talking about a swivel bar. He's talking about, look, he's thought about he needs a wetsuit. Okay, it's probably a little bit colder time of the year. A wrist loop, so he doesn't come loose from this and literally fall into the tank. A pulley system with a safety bar, and then belay device. And if you look here, he's even labeled who is going to do what, which this is just great. If you watch Mythbusters, you can see Adam Savage, he's saying, hey, I'm the one in the water. And then Jamie Heineman is actually the guy pulling back the weight. So he's labeled the positions of the people. Okay? And you can see how drawings are used every single day. Every day you are surrounded by objects. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's a small plane or a cell phone or even a Sharpie. Everything you use has started off as a technical drawing, as something that was a sketch in someone's mind you know, they took from their mind and put onto the paper and that's what we're really trying to uh, get a hold of here and what we're trying to learn